General Savary to see you, sire. Let me show him in. Sir. Like. Mud. Everywhere, sire. Hmm. Mud follows the army like a fox. The troops in good spirits? Excellent. It gives them great heart to have you so close. I have an errand for you. The Emperor Alexander has arrived at Kutuzov's camp at Olmutz. The Austrian Emperor is there too. Yes, but since he's lost his capital, he's largely decoration. I want you to take this letter to the Emperor Alexander. Tell him. Having heard of his arrival at his army, I have sent you to salute him in my name. Plus an army of 73,000 French soldiers. And that's not the point. I like to pay these courtesies. I want him to see that I bear him no grudge, despite the fact that he takes part in a war against me that is no concern of his. Shall I make that point? I've made it in the letter. You may add to it. You can say. You've heard me complain quietly to my closest advisers how his presence here beside the Austrian Emperor wounds and bewilders me. Yes, sir. It is no less than the truth. Stay as long as you can without seeming to spy. If I return without having at least one Russian dinner, you may count me as no more than a messenger. <laughs> we might make you one, then. You want to know how they view us, how the Russians get on with the Austrians, and whether Kutuzov is confident or wary? Uh, Kutuzov will always be wary. It's simply a matter of how far his view will prevail. I leave it to you. You know the sort of thing I like to know before a battle. Yes, sir. Good. Then ask my secretary to come in. Near Elchingen, November the 25th, 1805, 6.30 in the morning. Soldiers of the Grand Army, we have won one campaign. You have expelled the troops of the House of Austria from Bavaria. Half that army has been annihilated. You owe the success, your unbounded confidence in your emperor, your supporting fatigues and privations, and your unique bravery. Now the remnants of the Austrian army have been joined by a Russian army, which the gold of England has transported from the extremities of the universe. They will undergo the same fate, I promise you. In the second campaign, we shall be victorious with the least possible shedding of blood. My soldiers are my children. See that that is posted for all regiments by noon. Yes, sir. We shall seek till 8.30. Wait me there. Where are you off to? Olmutz, to see my cousin Boris. He's in the garden, they've just come up. 
Oh, you've got a cousin in the guards. <laughs> you won't want to know about us then. I'm not so sure he'll want to know me. He's got a letter for me. Oh, and some money from home. Oh, that's different. Make haste then, old boy. We're celebrating tonight my promotion. He'll probably want to celebrate himself when he sees me. I'll be as quick as I can. You're such a popular chap, Wastoff. You're very difficult to live with. Oh, rubbish! <laughs> I'll, uh... I'll try to save you some wine, but you know what the cavalry's like! Let's see you get out of that. Hmm. We shall try to. Lieutenant hmm. the Red Boris! Nikolai! <laughs> Well, I'm, I wasn't expecting you today. We don't waste time in the hazards. How are you? <laughs> Fine. How you've changed. And you, my goodness, how smart you are, Berg. You here too? Hello, Count. What's all this petty song for? The Russian nurse we used to have. Mama tried to teach her French, but that's all she ever managed. Mm. I'm amazed. I only sent that note off to you yesterday. That's the army close for you, swift as a bird. Mind you. I did send it through Bolkonsky, an adjutant of Kutusov's. He's a friend of mine. Well, there you are. That's what comes of having powerful friends. <laughs> Must be, what, six months, nearly? God, you look like a soldier. And you, you look as cool and trim as if you'd just come in from a stroll. How was the march? Oh, wonderful. The Tsar came with us. So we had everything, dinners, balls, receptions, I can't tell you. Oh, you dandies, not like us poor devils in the line. Well, what about some wine, hmm? Yes, if you really want some. Yeah, there you are. Berg, mm -hmm. be a good chap. Get a bottle up from the store. All right. No, 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 I insist. Let me, you're a guest. But exactly, I'd have bought some myself if I had the money. Now I've got it. Here, Berg. Take this, there's a good fellow, huh? Bring us two. Huh. My, they sent you a tidy sum, didn't they? Shall <laughs> be a minute. You've really changed, honestly. Well, so have you. What's in this damn thing? Don't catch cold, wear your vest at all times, and don't rush into things, I suppose. <laughs> oh, what a brute I am. I should have written home more often. They all send you their love, especially Natasha. Oh, that's all, uh, you know. Um... Found someone else of you? What? No, no. But you know Nikki when you're young. Yes, you... of course. Trouble is, back home they think everything remains the same. <laughs> ah, what's this damn thing? Oh, no. What is it? Isn't that just a note of recommendation to General Bagration? What am I supposed to do with this? What? Use it. What nonsense. That's Mama for you. God knows how much trouble she went to get it. Now look, that can be useful to you. What for? To get some adjutant's job at Staff HQ? Well, you could do worse. Rubbish. I'm nobody's lackey. Still the same old idealist. You're still the same old diplomat. Yes. Well, I had a good training. Where? Living in your house. Oh, I didn't mean that unkindly, Nicky. Your family have been wonderful to me, to my mother. But well, when you're the poor relation, no matter how kind people yes, are... Yes, of course, of course. What a thing to be talking about. Well, tell me, how are you? Just as you see. Everything's turning out, really, quite well. Although I confess, I wouldn't mind being made an adjutant. But why? It's so dull. Oh. 
Oh, no. No, I think if you are going to go in for a military career, you should try to make it as brilliant as you can. <laughs> I hope it comes off. This will. I think it may. Prince Bolkonsky, he... God, I know to you, he's taken an interest in me and he's um, trying to arrange a meeting with General Dolgorukov. Wonderful! You'll be an adjutant general yet, I can see it. Aha, he's there. Two bottles. Bravo, Berg. Where are the glasses? That's it. Well, 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 fancy the Tsar travelling with your lot. I must say it was very fortunate. We just had the best of everything. Listen, I hear you were wounded. Oh, it was nothing. Slight scratch, that's all. Did it leave a scar? Yes, but it doesn't show. Yeah. Well, cheers. To us and to the Tsar. To the Tsar. The Tsar. So you were really in battle? Well, of course. Someone does actually get into the front line, you know. <laughs> now, we were stationed on the edge of a wood against the French right. There was a good chance of them breaking through there, and the moment they did, we had to charge. And they did? Yes. Within a couple of hours, they made their move. I was beginning to think they'd never come. But then Isof said they would. He's a wonderful chap. Commands our squadron. Absolutely fearless. And what happened? We saw them coming towards us. Line upon line of blue-coated soldiers. At well, first, I didn't know what they were. Cattle or something. After all, you never really expect to see the enemy. Anyway, Denisov waited till they were strung out, easy to handle, gave the order, and off we went. But what actually did you do? We just bore down on them, cutting right and left with our sabres. Of course, we scattered the infantry. But what we didn't know was that there was a regiment of artillery behind them. My God, what did you do? We just charged the guns and broke up the whole emplacement. <laughs> oh, I can't tell you what it's like to be in a charge. It's... Prince Volkonsky, let me introduce my cousin, Count Rostov. How do you do? You were talking at the fair at Chern-Graben? Yes. You were there? I was. Please go on. One hears so few stories from people who actually took part. And that's because they're usually the most reticent, I suppose. When you've done the thing, you rarely feel the need to talk about it. Don't you agree? You were saying what it was like to be in a charge. I'd finished. Oh. I had the impression there was still a great deal to tell. I've heard so many stories from people who weren't there. I'd have been delighted to hear one from someone who was. I dare say. Our stories carry some weight. They're not the tales of little staff upstarts who get decorations for doing nothing. In which group you include me? I don't know you. And frankly, I don't wish to. I'm talking about staff officers in general. You seem bent on insulting me. However, since we're all likely tomorrow to be involved in a much more serious duel, I won't allow myself to be provoked. And if you have any sense, neither will you. I'm sorry, Drobetskoy, your friend seems to have taken a dislike to me. However, that's his affair. I just came in to say that I'll see you on Friday after the review. I managed to arrange an interview with Dolgorukov. Oh, thank you. There was no need to I be so... I can't stand that kind of pompous idiot! I'm sorry, Boris, I'd better be going. Well, goodbye. Thank you for the letter and for the money. Oh, that's all right. I'm sorry. Goodbye, Boris. Goodbye, Count. How did the dry Jeanne look? In good health? Pale and drawn, I thought. As though he had not been sleeping well. Ah. Commander who doesn't sleep well doesn't fight well. well. He's not as used as Your Majesty to living in the field. Why should he be? It's my profession, not his. His is to be a figurehead. I must say he does it very well. You're more than generous to your enemies, sire. Don't regard him as my enemy. The English, they're my enemies. They won't rest till they've destroyed me. I've destroyed them. Trafalgar was a bitter blow. Uh, can't be everywhere. Villeneuve was a fool. He had to prove himself against the British fleet because I'd criticized him for inaction off Cape Finisterre. But I never told him to take on Nelson. <laughs> he didn't know he was in command. But he should have done. 
No excuse for faulty intelligence. However, battle lost is a battle lost. We have one to win here, and win by a few brilliant strokes. What was your impression of the mood of the Russian camp? Well, we're very confident. They think you've advanced too far. Well, any fool can see that. What are they going to do? Attack or wait and see? What's in the air there? There's an enormous number of young Russians there. The Tsar brought them with him. They talk wildly about the ambition of France and how it is their duty to stop it. The atmosphere is charged with excitement. Mm, I see. The Tsar is sending Dolgorukov to see me. Oh, to repay the compliment you paid him by sending me. He will doubtless also talk peace terms, but really to keep his eyes and ears open. Well, we might fill those eyes and ears with the right impressions, or the wrong ones. <laughs> of course. The biggest problem is the Russians are encamped on the Pratsen Heights. If we must attack them, we must. But if we could just draw them down. How? Well, if they gained the impression, for instance, that we were weaker than they supposed, or that we were trying to avoid an engagement. Well, that could be arranged. What will you say to Dolgorukov? Hmm? Very little. I shall listen. Listen with a humility that he would hardly expect from the Emperor of France. These Austrian wines. Something arrived from Paris recently. I'll inquire, sir. Go and see Marshal Soult. He's very abstemious, but draws as big a ration as the rest of us. God knows what he does with it. <laughs> Your health, sir. Thank you, sir. Very. Where did you get him? Down by the river, sir. Dragoons, eh? And what were you doing down by the river? The corporal, monsieur. Sent us to get food for the horses. Uh, a patrol, sir. About 30 of them. Yeah. Feeling us out, that's all. Turned tail and ran the moment they saw us. If you had a fine-looking horse, what are you going to do with it? Sell it. Please, monsieur, you, you will not hurt my horse. <laughs> we shan't hurt him, my man. What do you think we are? But you've no more use for a horse. How much do you want for it? Two gold pieces, sir. I think that's fair. Damn, I haven't got enough. What about you, Wastoff? Do you want to buy him? Monsieur, what will happen to my horse? Oh, do be quiet, old boy. He'll be perfectly safe with us. Yes, I'll take him. Put him with the rest. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Funny how they don't look so fierce when you get up close to them. The French, I mean. He seemed more concerned about his horse. Yes. <laughs> I rather approve of that. Can't be much wrong with a chap who thinks more of his horse than he does of himself. Drink. Hmm. You seem a bit down in the mouth, old friend. Anything wrong? No. You seem to be brooding over something. Oh, it's nothing. You know, I went over to see my cousin a couple of days ago. Yeah. I thought it was going to be a lot of fun, and it turned out to be awful. <laughs> Nearly always is with one's relations. He's changed. He's so damn spruce and ambitious. <laughs> Well, he's in the guards. I know. But then they started to ask me about the charge at Schoengraben. And, and well, I embroidered a bit and felt disgusted with myself afterwards. Oh, don't worry, old chap. We all do it. Really? You too, Denisov? All the time, dear boy. <laughs> I'm the biggest liar in the camp. Everyone knows. <laughs> What's that? What regiment is this? We're a squadron of the Pavlograd Hussars, sire. Was it the squadron who charged the French at Schoengraben? Yes, sire. Were there many casualties? About a third killed and wounded, sire, but they've now been replaced. What a terrible thing is war. God bless you all. Oh, God. 
that I could die, die for him. No one is to fall in love with the Tsar. Oh, don't joke, Denisov. If we fought at Schoengraben, what won't we do here? <laughs> I agree, my friend, I agree, but I hear we to be reserved, so you may not get a chance. Oh, no! <laughs> There's no question. Bonaparte has made a bad mistake. He's come too far, and he knows it. I saw evidence everywhere in the French camp of hurried defensive preparations. It confirms my impression that he would rather avoid an engagement. I'm certain of it. And mind you, this man is subtle. A combination of French finesse and Italian play acting. Mm. <laughs> he received me with a courtesy which could only be false, stemming from a situation of great uncertainty. Prince Dolgorukov. Ah, Bolkonsky. Is His Excellency ready to begin? General Kutuzov is just coming out. Excellent. I was just describing what happened when the Emperor of the French, as he chooses to call himself, received me in his quarters yesterday. What is he like, really? A man in a grey coat, anxious to be called Your Majesty. But he got no title from me. What did he say to you? It was more a question of what I had to say to him. I told him for a start that the price of negotiation would be his giving up Italy. I expected a tirade. He merely nodded thoughtfully. It confirms my impression. His position is insecure. Despite my deep respect for Kutuzov, we should be fools to wait about and let him escape. We must attack. But in what position are we to attack him? I toured the outpost today, and there's no making out where his main forces are concentrated. In my opinion, he is undecided what to do. He has crossed the Danube and plunged recklessly into Moravia without securing his lines of communication. He obtained a cheap success at Ulm with Mac, but he knows now he is up against it. Exactly. And we will make Kutuzov see that. Did you convey all this to His Majesty? I have his complete support. It is a good thing he is young. We need a young man at the helm. Mm -hmm. Well... Are we all here? Prince Bagration is unable to attend, Your Excellency. Well, if Bagration is not coming, let us begin. Perhaps I should start by saying I had an interview with His Majesty a few hours ago. He informs me that everyone he has spoken to tells him the time is right for an attack. My own feeling is quite contrary to that. In my opinion, we should wait and see what happens. We know what will happen. The French will withdraw. Well, I wouldn't necessarily regard that as a disaster. However, before every battle, a great deal of discussion must take place. In my experience, such discussion achieves very little because once a battle starts, one usually has very little choice. Still, it seems we all feel better because of it. So let us have it and get it over. Perhaps I should make a brief introduction and then hand over to General Villarta, who has worked out a most meticulous plan covering every eventuality with a precision which has excited all our admiration. But first I must say that in our opinion, Bonaparte fears nothing so much now as a combined attack. His lines of communication are long, his position precarious. He exists in a hostile environment, we outnumber him. And it is the opinion of all of us here that it would be criminal folly not to take this opportunity to deliver a once for all lesson to this Corsican upstart. First, I want to say that I agree with every word uttered by Prince Dolgorukov. It is my belief that a combination of Austrian precision and Russian valor will carry the day at Austerlitz. All the advantages are on our side. Our immense forces are beyond the French right. I will come back to the important significance of this in a moment. Our armies are inspired by the presence of our emperors Alexander and Francis. They are eager for action. The strategic position on which the battle must be fought is known in the minutest detail to me 
Since last year, we carried out manoeuvres in this very locality. I will now read the dispositions for the impending battle. Dispositions for an attack on the enemy behind Kobelnitz and Zakolnitz. Whereas the enemy's left wing rests on wooded hills and his right extends along Kobelnitz and Zakolnitz behind the ponds that are there, while we, on the other hand, with our left wing far outflank his right, it will be to our advantage to what attack this What on earth is he talking about? Wing. Especially if we occupy the villages I suppose it all makes sense to the military mind. Whereby we can fall but it's all and precision and no fly. And the if one thing goes wrong, it all goes wrong. And, and anyway, the decision to attack has already been run. made. So why don't they all go home? To this end, it will be necessary to advance our left wing in columns. Moving off at first light... Suppose I'm killed tomorrow. Quiet, to what then? Does it matter? Tomorrow may be my chance of glory. Why do I want it so? Oh God, what am I to do if all I care for is fame? Much as I love my father, my sister, my wife, I would exchange them all tomorrow for one moment of glory. Why is that? Why? Why do I find it so hard to love someone? Truly and deeply love them. Why? 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 Thus creating a reserve attack in support of the second. Well, Marshal Ney has a habit of doing that. Have you heard nothing from him for two weeks? I sent a messenger post haste, mm -hmm. demanding a full report on the situation in the Austrian Tyrol. Yes. I received his communique this morning. Gentlemen, you will be glad to know the weather is fine in the Austrian Tyrol and the scenery magnificent. <laughs> <laughs> he then treats me to a lesson in military geography, proving conclusively the impossibility of fighting a war in the Austrian Tyrol, mm. and then adds as a postscript, oh, by the way, the Austrian army in northern Italy has ceased to exist. We await your further instructions. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think you should recall him. He never accomplishes anything but the impossible. <laughs> <laughs> I must confess I miss Ney in situations like this. Mm. I have the best marshals in the world. Davo, old iron face. Lan, steady as a rock. Who do you know? What a knife for an opening. And not just the military <laughs> ones. <laughs> Mura. <laughs> what school child doesn't play at being Mura? Bernadotte. Sometimes wonder whether he's not more brilliant than I am. Oh. And Sult, who believes there's only one direction for an army to march forward. You've made your names fit to conjure with around the world, but I miss Ney. He's the man to have at your back when things are going wrong, as Mura is to have at your front when they're going right. Then you'll have need of me tomorrow, not Ney. True. Tomorrow, you must win, and win quickly. The Russians will be harder to beat than the Austrians. Mm, they have courage, but little experience. I've been over and over their dispositions, and it's become clear what they intend to do. It will come down from the Pratson Heights, an era of monumental proportions. But of which we shan't complain. <laughs> These last few days, the Russians have been maneuvering to extend their left wing beyond our right. I'm doubtful. We should have let them get as far as that. No, no, no. I wanted it. Tomorrow the weather will be fine. It'll be a heavy mist to begin with. Davu, you'll be placed with two divisions of infantry at Ragan to oppose this maneuver. At what point? I'll leave that to you. But in carrying out this outflanking move, the Russian left must become separated from the Russian center for a while. And they haven't fully realized how long this interval will be, but I have. The moment the time arrives, you'll attack and inform me when the attack has begun. Oh, I better get my divisions moving tonight. As soon as this meeting ends, Sult, you'll be in command of the center, and as soon as we have word from Davout that his thrust has begun, you'll move into the gap that will have opened between the Russian left and the Russian center, and sever the one from the other. Bernadotte, you'll be in the left center with Murat and most of the French cavalry. The ten battalions of the Imperial Guard and ten of Udenau's division will be kept in reserve under my command. <laughs>
Are you the officer of the watch? Yes, sir. How long have those fires been lit? About an hour, sir. It's a French picket line. I thought they were still there. Volkonsky rode down earlier today. They were still there in force when I went down. I'm sure it's a trick. I'm certain that they're pulling back, and that's just a rear guard left to deceive us. Well, we shall know everything tomorrow. In any case, they haven't moved forward yet. Nor are they likely to. The position remains just as it was at the War Council. The army must move into position under cover of darkness and attack at first light. I agree. Volkonsky, you will convey all this to Marshal Kutuzov? Yes, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, may I ask a favor? What is it? My squadron is being held in reserve tomorrow. Can I be attached to the first? What is your name? Count Rostov. Ilya Rostov's son? Yes, Your Excellency. Very well, you may attend upon me. I'll send a note to your commanding officer. This victory will conclude our campaign, and we can return to winter quarters, where we shall be joined by fresh troops now mobilizing in France. And then the peace I shall conclude will be one worthy of my people, of you, and of myself. Napoleon. <laughs> Contact with the man in front. Oh, Russian troops are moving down the mountainside, Your Majesty, in the direction of Sokolnitz and Schlapnitz. In strength? Yes, sir, about two divisions. It seems as if the whole of the Russian left wing is on the move. the village ahead are very narrow, Your Excellency. You have no business marching through narrow streets in sight of the enemy. You should have gone round. The enemy is still a long way off, Your Excellency. The dispositions... The are... dispositions! Kindly do as you are told! A long way off. How does he know where the French are? begin, Mikhail Hilarionovich? I was waiting, Your Majesty. Waiting? Not all the columns have formed up yet, sire. We are not on the Empress Field, you know, Mikhail Hilarionovich, where the parade is not begun till all regiments are present. That is the reason I do not begin, sire. Because we are not on parade. And not on the Empress Field. However, if it be your majesty's command...
Give the signal. That's the French! They're here! Stop them, Ben! Stop them! Get back alive! Get back! Was it I didn't see the sky before? So lofty. So limitless. And how happy I am to have seen it at last. Yes. All is vanity. All is delusion. Except the sky. That is wide. Wide sky. Order the charge. Must order an attack, Your Excellency. The left is cut from the center. Don't you understand? The French have driven a wedge right through us. I will not order an attack until I hear from Kutuzov. But Kutuzov has not been seen these past two hours. Then he must be found, or the Emperor. Count Rostov, go and find His Excellency. Tell him we're awaiting his orders to move. God, it'll be too late, too late. Go and make all speed. Yes, Your Excellency.
Battle is lost at all points, sire. You must leave. You must. Dead or dying, sire. We're doing what we can for them. Fine young men. All of them. Fine deaths. Their country can be proud of them. It wasn't their fault. They lost the day. They died bravely on the field of Austerlitz. <laughs> 